So um, uh, I'm going to be talking about sort of the other targets uh, that are being developed. And uh, these are my conflicts of interest on the PI of uh, studies. So there's going to be, uh, actually Dave's going to give a lecture on CMET, and Neil Siegel is going to give a lecture on immune uh, therapies for GI cancer. So I'm going to skip those last uh, three things there and just talk briefly about FGFR, IGF-1R, and then we'll do the uh, questions. So uh, FGFR, um, FGFs in the receptors, they regulate proliferation, differentiation, and migration. Uh, very fundamental to uh, embryonic development and um, sort of reminds me of many other pathways we've talked about. It's got 18 ligands and four different receptors, and they signal via MAP kinase uh, in other uh, pathways. Uh, very interesting. It's implicated in a lot of different uh, cancer types, including GI cancers, and there's a whole number of genetic diseases and uh, disorders uh, caused by FGF and FGFR. So in terms of aberrations, you sort of get the usual. You have mutations, translocations, amplifications, and splice variants. So it's fairly typical of many of the uh, other targets that we've looked at. In terms of compounds, uh, there's sort of the TKI, both non-selective all the way there to the left and selective in the middle, and then um, some monoclonal antibodies and ligand uh, traps uh, as well. And I just point out the regorafenib actually does inhibit FGFR1 at 200 nanomolar. In terms of the uh, anti-FGFR uh, compounds uh, being developed in colorectal cancer, uh, there's, these are actually mainly being developed in breast where FGFR is uh, often amplified, but there is a trial in colorectal uh, cancer with Brivinib and also the AstraZeneca compound in gastric uh, as well, and Brivinib trial in HCC. In terms of uh, what's been, what they've seen so far, there's some early signals of anti-tumor response, but mainly in FGFR1 amplified uh, breast cancer. The side effects mainly reflect the uh, VEGF targeting of these. You do see hyperphosphatemia, and I've been involved in the phase one trials of many of these, and it's quite impressive how high that phos shoots up, and it's due to uh, uh, affecting a hormone in the uh, kidneys. Now, finding these patients is challenging, and there are some ongoing uh, phase two trials. So what about uh, IGFR? You know, IGFR was sort of the hot target about seven years ago. It's kind of dropped off the map. Uh, has three ligands, six receptors. There's hybrid, and there's also heterodimerization of these receptors. Um, I've listed off the, some of the monoclonal antibodies in uh, TKIs, and that's from a review by Singh et al. Um, and just to give an example of a couple, OSI-906, that we worked with that extensively at our center. It's a small molecule uh, inhibitor, but... Um, when they tried to do combinations, so for instance with Everolimus, there was DLTs at the first dose level and uh, no responses. There was a study in colorectal cancer that was terminated due to withdrawal of the drug. Two HCC trials were terminated. There is a trial in multimyeloma, and these, this target does seem to be important for adrenal cortical carcinoma. So uh, that trial is ongoing. Fijitunumab, uh, the JCO publication was actually withdrawn because of inclusion of unconfirmed responses. They stopped a bunch of phase three trials. Uh, there's SAEs that were sort of unexpected. Uh, dehydration, hyperglycemia was expected, but not, not uh, so high to be clinically significant in hemoptysis. Had activity in sarcoma and adrenal cortical carcinoma, but was discontinued. Uh, Sixitumumab, uh, the IMCA12, um, uh, again, seems to have activity uh, in adrenal cortical, and has, there's multiple uh, phase one, two uh, uh, studies going on.